the first time since meeting Ilya, Indica felt a stab of doubt. What if she had made a mistake? What if she had done something wrong? What if the Kudyets wouldn't work? Why was every step on her road to God drawing her closer to the devil? I did everything correctly. Otherwise he would have died from sepsis. And if he didn't? There! He's healed! A miracle! Wouldn't feel good, would it? That means he was indeed talking to God and earned his absolution. God, please. Talk to me this one time. How did I go against you? Is it in my power to intervene in your design? Is this a part of your plan? Is this how it's supposed to be? He will be all right. The arm will heal. Ilya will live. He'll live. So now I have to feel guilt for this as well? You can see I'm trying. But he's always behind my shoulder. Me again. You were driven by fear. The fear of ending up with a corpse. And back then, with the gypsy, what was it? Were you restless because of his tanned arms?
Cyrus cut it as punishment. It wasn't a big deal. I burned Father Sergei's Felonian. Look, that's our cathedral from the poster. What? The tavern you were talking about. There it is, below. 
Yeah. By the way, see the pawn shop opposite the tavern? Its owner is Naam Pat, Ephraim's brother. They've always hated each other, and yet depended on each other. Naam was buying stolen stuff from the vagrants, who would then go to Ephraim to spend the money on shitty wine and whores. And Ephraim's spoons would often end up in Naam's shop. We used to call them the Batshit Brothers. Why don't they like each other? Because each of them thinks that the other brother is richer. Soon you'll be able to play a concert there again. I want to see it, yes? It's not finished.
can we do that? Where's the good yet? It's over. Been too long already. Last day the 23rd. Today, the cadets will be taken further. You'll be able to find it in the lips. Yeah, it's that's still where. Here. Please, if you only knew what we've been through. People showed up from other countries. Everyone who wanted to was already venerated. Listen, it's... if you don't let me see the miracle, I'm dead. Literally. Dead. And he... I can be honest with you, right? Can I confess to you? Oh, sure. He escaped from prison to commune with the miracle. What do you mean? If only you knew what, what he's been through. Oh, fine. Wait here. Wait here. Priest will never break the seal of confession. He's had worse, trust me. He's had worse. This way, over here. What did he tell you? There he is. There he hey. is. No, no, we, we were just joking around. He has a knife. Don't come closer. No, he only has one arm. No way, he's got a knife. Like a... He'll stab me. Step aside. Oh, oh my god! Shoot him! Shoot him! Freedom, my dear! Hey, it's here! What? The jet. Hold it, hold it. Like that, hold it. Come on, hold it. Come out with your hands up. Help you, Dan. I'm gonna count to three. One. Don't you dare. This is on the ground. Usually people show up about their legs. And? They grow back? It's not about that. You see, if the Lord allows... Enough. Let it go.
heard of Makar, the Scytheman. There was a lot about him in the papers, but only after he was hanged. Seven kids lost their heads because of his side. What? Well, he chopped them off. Are you comparing him to me? Well, no. No, I think Makar is something of a saint. Listen, let me tell you. Makar had three kids, all of them boys. One day, he, he dropped something on his youngest, a, a wagon or a wardrobe or something. It was so bad that the poor boy stopped feeding his legs. Couldn't sleep at night. Lay there all day crying from pain. The village doctor couldn't do anything, so... Well, Makar couldn't take it anymore. He went to the priest and said, Bless me, Father, to end the child's suffering. Well, the priest didn't bless him, of course. He sent him home to pray and think about the salvation of his soul. Makar prayed for a week, but the son wouldn't stop screaming. So, Makar snapped took the cover off his side, said a prayer, and ended the suffering with a single sleep. He went back to the priest and said, It's done, Father. I don't have a soul anymore. I lost my right to think about salvation back when I dropped that wardrobe on my son. Or was it a wagon? I don't remember. So, my soul is done. Better tell me where he is now, in hell or in heaven. The priest said, in heaven, of course. He didn't get to sin. In a way, you gave him a gift. Sent him straight to the kingdom of heaven without any earthly suffering. Well, this thought got stuck in Makar's head. So he went home, put his other sons in front of a kiosk, said a prayer with them, and chopped their heads off. Well, after that, he went completely insane and started hunting down his neighbor's kids. Managed to kill four of them before he got caught. Why is he a saint? Think of it this way. Some martyr gets burned at the stake because of Christ. Does it mean he buys himself eternal life for ten minutes of suffering? Hmm? Can we call this a real sacrifice? Makar is a different story. To save someone else's soul, he sacrificed his own. Why are you telling me all this? Father Prock, the one you killed. He couldn't have asked for a better gift. He's now an innocent victim, a martyr. Maybe he'll even be canonized. And what about Makar? What about him? He got angry. I guess. Listen. What's your name? It doesn't matter. Need something? Doesn't matter indeed. Listen, we didn't kill Father Buckle. Let me go. Don't take your conscience with sin. I'll repay you. And what exactly can you repay me with? What do you want? What do I want? Come closer. Come on. Turn around. What? Turn around. Oh, oh. Come on. Now sing. 
I don't know. Something, French anthem. I don't know their anthem. Well, just in something you know. Quiet forest, love, love, bye. All the stars are in the sky. If I can shepherd grass and I guess I can't do anything worse than that. It's so easy to step over everything you believe in. Step where? Somewhere. Onto your side. What kind of side is that? Are you going to argue again? That there are no sides? That there's neither good nor evil? You can try. Convince me that I haven't done anything bad. Or can you not even do that now? Bad? What does that word mean? I've killed a priest. Don't play dumb. I'm not. But still, what exactly does that word mean? Bad. Sinful. Of the devil. And how do you know what is of the devil and what is not? There are commandments. So we're checking against a formal list of regulations. No, everything is really obvious. It's evil, dishonest, unfair. Evil? There's not a drop of evil in despondency, avarice, or bawdry. Dishonest? A dog is honest. It eats when it's hungry, bites when it's scared, copulates when there's someone to do it with. Well, you remember. I'm talking about intentional dishonesty for one's own gain. So, pretending your whole life that you don't want something you want, that you don't feel something you feel for eternal life in heaven, doesn't that fit perfectly with your definition? What else did you say? Unfair? Is it fair that one tree has a thousand leaves and another two thousand? Is it fair when two people throw the dice, one gets a six and the other gets a two? Of course, all this is rational, but we don't like this rationality. We angrily call it unfair. But if you forget your emotions, it turns out, strictly speaking, this word can't be applied to anything. What about what's happening now? What can be more revolting, disgusting, vile? I don't need any deliberations, I know it, I feel it. When you're cold, you don't need to think about it, you just feel it. You know that you're cold. Do you understand that there is no cold without warmth? You can't get rid of poverty and suffering, leaving only wealth and happiness. Leave me alone. Oh, I'd love to. But I will only disappear when you stop wanting me to. It's not that hard. Just remember that good and evil, warm and cold, those are just lines on a thermometer. God and the devil, those are you. One cannot exist without the other. This, let's say, complete exposure. No, you can't. Yeah. I tell you what, fear not earthly justice for that of heaven. When the soul is separated from the body. Ah! Ah! Stop right there, you bitch! Oh, stop! My hand! 
My hand! Fuck! Stop! Stop right there, you bitch! the cadets. One second. Oh, oh. Did I undo my trousers? Where is the cadets? Well, um... <laughs> they didn't even give me five rubles for it. What? Give me the money. I don't have any. It's gone. You know, I've already conquered the guitar, but the, the brass... Pipes. Where is the cadet? Mm, never heard of it. Someone just exchanged it for a trumpet. A, a man with one arm? Oh, you are extremely lucky. This is exactly what you're looking for. An amazing artifact of unspeakable wondrous power. Just 25 rubles. What do you mean, 25? You got it for five. Mm. 20 for everything. Whoa, One whoa, second, whoa, whoa. I just need to have a look. You can look, but, but don't touch. What? What did you sell me, you scumbag? Oh, damn. Hold oh, no. on. It doesn't even fucking you work. puking it or something. God. Get your ass out of here. Go off me. Excuse me. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 